Hey, what's up guys? We're gonna be replacing a dashboard on a 2018 Honda Civic. Now this tutorial applies to all 10 gen Honda Civics ranging from 2016 up to 2020 and beyond. So the steps are, what you wanna do is you can remove this thing on top of here, which you just literally pull on it and it should come out, all right? Next up, what you wanna do is you will have two screws that are holding this plastic piece right here. You'll have one and two. Remove those two screws. Next thing what you will have on the very bottom, you have this plastic trim right here, right? This just literally pull, you just pull on it. It's only held on by clips. There's no screws involved and you pull that off. They do have um, uh, connectors. Be careful with that. And also on this side, there's also a temperature sensor. So be careful when you pull it out so you don't rip yours off. Mine unfortunately came off, but that's okay, we can fix that. Next step, what you wanna do is, you have the, um, sure. the console. So these, right, these, uh, what you wanna remove is these two uh, plastic trim pillar covers on this side and there's no screws, nothing like that. What you wanna do, you grab it from the bottom right here, pull it up, pry it up a little bit, be careful, and just pull it up and away this way. You're gonna to have to put a little bit of elbow grease on it because it is a little tough to remove it. And you probably have a little tough time trying to remove this one on the very top. You just pull it up and towards you and you get it out. Next step, what you wanna do is you have two screws right here. All right, you remove these two screws, about remove these screws your, on the sides. Yeah, one second. Oh, before you, you can't, you can't get here first. What you're gonna have is you're gonna have your climate control, right? As soon as you remove these little trims, you have a, um, a Phillips screw on this side as well on this side. Once you remove that, all you gotta do is grab it from the bottom and pull it out. Then you'll have the um, climate control out. Once the climate control is out, what you have is the um, the screen. Um, depending on it, whether you have the smaller screen or or this one, the process will be exactly the same thing. You'll have two screws in the same separate location. You can remove the that out. Be sure to remove um, your connectors as well. And also, as a word of advice, what you can do uh, before you start, get a piece of cardboard and um, make sure you identify which screws you have, right? You can also go with the route of having a little toolbox and then arrange them in there. However, if you have a cardboard box, you can also write on here, right? Instead of putting them in Ziploc bags or anything like that, you can write on here, say step one, step two, step three, step four. The next step that you're gonna wanna do is you can remove the glove compartment simply by pulling it up, bringing this guy in, this guy as well, and then all you have to do is just push it down and it come out. There's no bolts or screws attached to this guy. Now what you want to do is you will have um, some screws going right here. One, two, three, and four. Four screws on top and you will have another two right here. One and should be another one right underneath right here. Two screws. Once you get that out, this whole entire thing should this um this uh plastic piece should just pull right out. Get this guy out. What you want to do is go on this side right here and pull this cover right out. And once you got that out and you have these four screws coming out of I mean six screws that come out of here, all you have to do is Pull this guy on the side right here. It should unclip and let's see. Pop this cover up. This should slide right out. You still gotta pop it off. All right. And it's no screws attached. All it is is held on by clips. Pull that out, and now you can just pull this guy right out. There we go. Now we have that part out. All right, now the second thing which you wanna do is if you reach right under here, 
you will see you have your airbag right here, right? Now you have um, the, the screws that you want to remove is you have this guy right here that holds on to the frame. So there'll be one screw on top of here that you would want to remove, I believe. And uh, also make sure that your battery is disconnected. When all this is happening, that way you don't uh, blow, accidentally blow your any other airbags or damage your car. And right under, right on top, actually, yeah, so you want to remove this guy. This is what holds the airbag. And right on top right here, can't see it, but there is a screw on the left side and on the right side that um, is holding the airbag to the frame. Once you have this plastic piece, uh, plastic piece removed, you reach right underneath here and you will see a 12 millimeter bolt that is right in here. Remove it and it's this guy right here. Now your airbag is detached. See, so you, you, you can move it. Now the next step that you wanna do is you go right under your pillars and just pop out these little airbag covers. Just pop it out and it should be, you can use a, an eight millimeter or a Phillips screw and you just pop it right out. Once you have that screw out, you literally just stick your finger in there, pull it out and it should slide right out. All right, it's only held by um, one clip and that'll be it. Now the next thing what you wanna do is you have all of this out at this point. Um, go ahead and remove your radio. You want to just uh, pry it up. There are clips on the bottom as well as on the top on both sides. So you're going to just pull up and this way. All right. Now, once you have that out, you can see those little clips. All right. There's no other screws, nothing like that. It should just pull out. Um, pull it out slowly. Disconnect all the wiring on the back. You will have connectors on the bottom. You will have connectors in the very back. Um, and you do also have these little mounting points that hold the wires in. What you wanna do is just squeeze those in together on the sides right here. Use like a screwdriver, push it in, pull out the other side, or you can use like a needle nose, needle nose pliers and clip it in and it will should pull it out. Anyways, once you get that out, this radio should just pull exactly out as so. Now you'll pull out this, uh, the trim covers and it should just pull out, put this one out, whoops. Now, once you have this guy out, this should, uh, I think this is like GPS or something like that, or uh, you unscrew that and this should come out. And then you're gonna wanna have to take off this, the top piece of the instrument of the um, wheel cover and stick your hands behind it right here and just pull it right up. And you'll have, um, this will come up and you stick your fingers in here and pull it up. Once you have that out, if you have a start stop, like this one, you're gonna want to unclip the connector and also for the hazard lights. This should come straight out. All right, now all what is left to do is to remove the entire um, the entire dashboard. And you want it to remove the um, instrument cluster itself, held on by a by three Phillips screws. One, two, and three remove those guys so once you have it unhooked you will pry it up and you'll reach right un right beneath underneath it and there will be two connectors that you would unclip once you unclip that those connectors the instrument cluster should come straight out one thing we forgot to take up remove is this little side panel right here fill it one single a uh, two two phillips screws one two remove those out pop this guy right out pull on it If you have a 10 speaker system, pop this guy off, just use your fingers, pop it up, and remove this connector for the stereo. That's removed. Take this guy, put it aside now. One thing I forgot to remove is behind the instrument cluster. You have to also detach these screws right here. Um, looks like it's, we're gonna have to remove this, the center console piece right here right here and right behind it looks like there's another screw that's holding onto it so we want to remove that before we can remove the dash um 
what we need to do is go ahead and move this center console away from here so that we can get to the screws in the back right here as well as these screws and both sides right here all right and the way how you want to remove it um if you have a manual i'm pretty sure it's the same process on an automatic as well what you want to do is um once we have those little parts out you'll see these screws right here all right this attaches onto here unscrew these screws first stick your fingers under here or some kind of a uh, tool plastic tool and you'll be able to pop it right up this pops up this will allow you to at least um, move it out out of the way and you get under here just lift this little rubber piece up and you'll find these two two screws holding down the um, holding it down the back now you remove that right and you have these screws remove those screws um, they're just uh, these two screws right here now um, I'm not gonna go I'm not gonna remove the entire piece right here so I think I'll use just a little bit of wiggle room so I can pull it out and what I will do is I have a screwdriver right here so the screwdriver I'll just stick it in through this little through this hole right here and I'll have at least access or I can even stick it in through here um, that I can remove these screws in the back. Back right here, these, um, this is also attached by clips in the back, as you can tell right here. Whoops, so this, guy, this clip right here. You wanna pull this off and um, this should pull out as well. And on mine, uh, I'm not sure if I broke it or not, but this whole entire piece should come out as well. Um, and then all I did was stick my hand underneath here and just pull it. And as I pulled it out, um, it gave me all this little room. And I'm not gonna remove this entire thing because it's unnecessary. It was just too much work. I still haven't removed this guy right here. Take a screwdriver or some kind of a plastic, so that way you don't damage this right here. Stick it underneath and just pull it up. As you pull it up with this thing, it should just pull right out. Now let's go ahead and start pulling out all the screws that's holding down the dashboard. Yeah, it's exactly where all these screws are. So there's one right here, another one inside here. You have um, another one right here, one right here. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Got that one. And you'll have one. So it's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven screws that are holding down this dashboard. We should be able to get them out. So now that we removed all these seven screws right here that are holding down the dashboard, we're gonna have some resistance with the wiring. Um, one way how I like to go ahead and whatever I can see, just unclip them like that just that way we could have the very least resistance and we can pull it out as easy as possible however we will um, you can also reach from the back side right here and unclip them oops yep. there we go um we're basically pulling it out you'll have this connector just go ahead um and stick it in behind here so it's not in the way and also on the on this little bomb thing that we do not fully remove. What we want to do is it'll be still clipped on on the back side right here. So we'll just pull this guy down. This will give us more room so that, um, so that we can just pull it right up. All right. Now this whole entire dashboard is basically removed. And as you're pulling it out, be careful that um, you don't. Um, accidentally destroy any other uh, harnesses or wires like these guys right here just pull them back underneath it and um we are gonna have this guy right here that we have to go ahead and take air of first um, let's see actually i already have it disconnected so let me go ahead and see if i can even do this with one hand go ahead and Re, um, move your steering wheel down. Mine's is already, but however, let's see if we can 
there's an easier method to pull it out since I mean our glass is damaged. However, I don't have it removed at this point. Just go ahead. Oh, I forgot to disconnect the earbag. And my power is off, so only do this when your power when the power is disconnected. And the way how you want to do it is simply pull on this, whoops, just pull on this black tab. And as you pull on it, simply disconnect. And there we go. Now that's disconnected. So it looks like that mines was not disconnected. What you want to do is just take a screw, uh, flathead screwdriver, stick it underneath here, pull it out, and just go ahead and disconnect this guy right here. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Now that that's disconnected, um, stick that back underneath here. And the easiest way how to pull it out is have your door open on this side and just take it and slightly pull it out on to the uh, to the right side. All right. Let's see. second fellow so now we have the dashboard completely out what you do want to be careful is all these um, wires again um, go ahead and unclip it'll be on the back side right here whoops it'll be on the back side unclip it route all your um i believe this was the for the speaker so route those out so the really the, the wires that you can be worried about uh, when you're pulling it out is going to be these wires right here this one, as well as this blue wire that is connected all to the bottom of the dash. So you won't be able to pull it out and you don't wanna be struggling around with it. And like I said, take it and pull it out this way right here. Do be careful that you don't damage your um, steering wheel as I did accidentally go ahead and scuff it up on the sides right here, as you can tell, as I was pulling it out, but no biggie. Um, now that we have it pulled out, let's go ahead and see what it takes to put in the new one. And it should be the exact same reverse process. Um, all these screws later should, you know, like how we started, um, going backwards right here. And that should technically conclude, conclude, conclude the removal process. Now, I do wanna show you guys the, um, the dashboard that we do have. Give me one second. So go ahead and take a look at the two dashes that we have. As you can see, they look the same, right? Except for this one right here has a hole in it. That's the original one that we have. And don't mind that. I just passed it up as a temporary measure. Um, so these dashes look the same, two different part numbers. However, one is cheaper, one is not. So this one is for the 10 speaker system. This one is not, same exact layout from pretty much the same exact, um, mold molding process as well the only thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and modify this one so it looks just like that one what we're going to be doing is taking a piece of paper putting it right here trace it out and we'll just take this put a template on here and take a dremel tool and cut it out now you're going to tell me well this is kind of sketchy you know why would you be doing that well for a couple of reasons right this one i was able to pick up for 180 bucks use right here it had a small little blemish, which I mean is absolutely nothing. The biggest thing is the price difference between these two. Exact same material, just absolutely nothing different on here. Exact same tabs. All right, so one of the steps that we're going to do is go ahead and remove this airbag on here. It's held on by some Phillips screws or a 10 millimeter screw. Um, and you're going to want to go ahead and pull these back right here as it has these teeth right here and pull it out. What you want to do is take a piece of paper and tape it down to the dashboard itself where that hole is. As you can see what I did, I just put a reference point where the center would be and there's two little lines so you just have a, a reference point, I guess. You just grab a piece of pencil um, and just go over right here like that and go over it lightly slowly you'll see where the outline is of where that hole is don't put too much pressure on it because the only dark area that you want is the outline itself all right so let me go ahead and do this and then i'll show you guys what it looks like you should have a pretty distinct outline of what the hole should look like and as well as a reference point 
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try with the knife, get a nice razor sharp knife. I'm gonna try to cut this out with that. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna use this Dremel. However, the, it's a softer plastic, so I'm assuming that this knife will will work. Bring you guys along the trip. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut it using a knife and be conscious of how deep you go because there is air ducts that are underneath here, so you do not wanna destroy those. Just go in about an eighth of an inch deep and you should be good. All right, so after a little bit of adjustments, we finally fit. And let's go ahead and show you guys. So there it is. And all you want to do is just take it and squeeze it and make sure that it whoops, and make sure that it has a nice good seal everywhere. It's not popping up or anything like that. Anyways, there we go. And now not only did we save a couple hundred bucks, but we have a nice perfect working dash. Here we go. Let's go ahead and install this bad boy back to the car okay. we have the reverse process go ahead and install the um, the passenger side airbag and should just fall in there snugly take your screws screw it back in and now we are going to be ready to go ahead and install it back in the car make sure you remove double check all around that you have everything off of there. Replace whatever you have to replace. See like on mine I had this little guy on here. I had this on here, five screws. Make sure you just replace this on together if you don't already have one on there. And that should technically be it. All right guys, so I went ahead and got this dash in there. A few things that you wanna go ahead and pay attention to is there are a few little nubs where the dash does go in so that it does not wiggle on the very top. And do pay attention to the screw holes, like this one right here. Make sure they line up on both the left and the right side. Overall, don't, don't finalize anything until all the holes and everything connect. Then once you see all that, go ahead and reverse the entire process and connect everything back together just the way how it did it. Remember, follow like a little diagram like this or if you want to go ahead and record it i mean record it any other way how you want to take photos that's fine whatever helps you remember to put these bolts back in place anyways i'm gonna go ahead and finish this off and once i'm finished i'll show you guys the final results